You're such an asshole. Good morning. November is Don't Get Falsely Accused of Rape Awareness Month, so get the essay, really. Penn's Principle, written by Randy Bentwick, paperback, Kindle, and audio book. There we go. I've done my part to improve the world, and good night, everybody. <clears throat> All right. We have a question. If you have a question, or in this case, four, go to assholeconsulting.com, where I, the world's only professional asshole, and America's older brother, will give you the truthful answer. <clears throat> Anonymous writes. One, you once mentioned that by the age of 30, you should be able to sweet talk or flirt a girl to your room to charm her. Well, no, you you don't sweet talk the girl to come back to your room so that you charm her then. You should sweet talk that is the charming process. You take her back to the room for some way, hey, hey. Uh, so uh, I didn't take girls back to my place to charm them. I mean, I might have charmed them in the process, but we didn't go back to my place for charm sessions. We went there for a very specific purpose. <clears throat> I understand your meeting, though. Can you give us the context and the analysis to do so? All right, you are already going to fail at this because you want the analysis. I am robot. Give me formula. Insert formula. I must go and insert team by executing sub-protocol. Ejaculate, ejaculate. Bah, bah. No. This is the classic. Aaron, give me the cheat code. Aaron, getting girls is hard. How do I how do I flirt and chat with the, this is the art. Okay? This is now I was like you when I was like, you know, a dumb eighth grader. <clears throat> you you are misdiagnosing the problem. Okay? D women are not objects. Aaron, how do I get a coffee maker? You go down to Walmart, you give the fine uh, men and women at Walmart your money, you take home the coffee maker. Aaron, how do I get a Big Mac? You go into the drive-thru at McDonald's. You give the good men and women at McDonald's your money. They give you a Big Mac. Women are human beings that have their own, a completely own different world of thought and logic and, and processes and preferences and tastes, <clears throat> which changes second to second, which makes it fun. It also makes it incredibly painful, and you get sick of that game and you retire from it. But at least at first, while your hormones are going, it, it seems fun, okay? They, they're they humans. This is where the art is. And you approaching them like they're fucking objects that you just like, well, I, I up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, start. Hey, I got the girl sucking my dick. Oh, that's what it was. So what it ultimately means is you're a lazy fuck. And you don't want to do the hard work that is necessary to get the girls. Okay. So before you even get to the charming stage, you know, like the, the funny fat guy that the, the fat guys who don't want to go to the gym. And so they rely on humor, which is good. That's good. But it's like a car. The number one thing a car needs is the engine. And if you're not going to have the engine, don't even, don't even start. So if you're not going to be physically attractive, don't even worry about like charm or wooing or being innovative or creative or being Cary Grant. If you're not going to be physically good looking, don't bother. God almighty. Now to flip it on the other side of the ladies, because Chad looks at that. I, I'm just fascinated with the online dating world. Just fascinated because there's fat people. They're like, why the fuck are you here? Why the fuck are you here? You're not even going to do the basic thing, and that is be physically attractive to the opposite, uh, opposite sex. Because if you're not willing to do that, well, and you, you still want to talk to the opposite sex, it's called being friends because there's no physical attraction there. So if you're not willing to go to the gym and not willing to become at least physically what women desire and want, that's fine. Be friends or be accustomed to being in the friend zone. <clears throat> Because we're not even going to start building a car unless we have an engine. And we're not even going to start flirting with a girl until we're physically attractive enough for the girl to be physically or romantically or sexually interested in us. All right? And this fucking question, uh, what's the protocol and the analysis? That just shows me you're a nerdy fuck who doesn't want to go to the gym. Repeat after me, I'm a nerdy, lazy fuck who doesn't want to go to the gym. Everybody now, one, two, three. I'm a nerdy, lazy fuck who doesn't want to go to the gym. Okay, and until you're willing to go to the gym 
Oh, and by the way, not just go to the gym like you brought your books home and you didn't study, but you took your books home. That's an old Bill Cosby joke. <clears throat> Until you're willing to work out and diet and become physically, all right, then don't even bother chasing the girls. Don't even bother with flirtation. Don't even bother studying Cary Grant flicks. All right? Now, <clears throat> a, an engine doesn't just make the car. I don't know if you knew this, but cars need other things like wheels and a chassis and a transmission and some axles and something. Matter of fact, needs a lot of things. All right. But <clears throat> once we're once we agree that we're going to put an engine in the car, then we can move on to the wheels or the chassis or whatever. All right. And once you're willing and I will become physically attractive, okay, to the extent I possibly can without, you know, cutting into other things like working or my career or my mental health. All right, once you're willing to commit to deliver at least what women want physically, then you go ahead and then you can move on to Trump. So assuming that, assuming you're willing to do that, you should be able, can you give us the context and the analysis? All right. Do not overthink it. Okay? <clears throat> you yourself must be at least an interesting fellow. You must be charming and funny and witty. Okay? And this is where the art comes in. This is where <clears throat> you just, you know, how do I get good at jujitsu? Well, you don't study it. You don't analyze it. You go and you do it. You practice it. That unto itself is an art. It's the same thing with girls. You're going to have to go out with hundreds of girls. You're going to have to, you know, get comfortable with them. I mean, there's some, there's some, Cheats, I guess, some <clears throat> bits of advice I could give you, but it's standard conversation. You know, most people are waiting for their turn just to talk about themselves. That's pretty much all of conversation. So what you do is you ask questions about her. Normally, relax. Don't have a battery of questions. Don't rehearse it. Just go in. Naturally flow with the conversation. Where does it go? Okay. Well, that's interesting. Tell me more. And then this is another thing, unfortunately, young men, you don't have a lot of life experiences that are interesting or anecdotes that are, are interesting. But every once in a while, the opportunity and, and, and the conversation will come up where it's like, you might have something that's very pertinent to what that girl just said that happened in your life, and you tell the girl about it. But in addition to being a good conversationalist and just being able to keep the conversation going, which if you try less and just chat with the girl... <clears throat> ask her questions about herself, not interrogative, but follow up on thought questions. Like not, what do you do for, Oh, do you like, I mean, those are all fair questions. Oh, that, that, that that's kind of interesting. Right. But somewhere in there, you got to be funny. You got to make a girl laugh. All right. And when a girl laughs at your stupid jokes, you're in that. That's the, that's the, that's about the only thing I could say is to make the girl laugh is to be funny. And there's being funny like a stand-up comedian, <clears throat> which will help. Not that you become a stand-up comedian, but you become funny. But that's playing to a general audience. You also have to have enough experience and charm and an incredibly fast brain, good wit, cleverness, so that when the girl says something, you can immediately play off of it. All right? Because that's specific to her. And you come over. The, now, don't overdo it. Don't be slapstick. It, this isn't like you always... Make the girl laugh. <clears throat> but when there's time to make the girl laugh, when there's time to flirt, that's when you, you throw it in there. And that's how you charm girls is you make them laugh. Say something funny, not too serious. It could be a little, if, if the girl you think likes you a little bit, it could even be crass. And then, then you get the backhand hit in your chest. Oh, oh, she likes you. Uh, but that's it. That's how, it, and there's no, you know, and you want context. Well, back in the day, you would go up to a girl at a physical place. All right. It was, wasn't on the internet. You go to a dance hall, you go to a bar, uh, you go to a nightclub or something. <clears throat> They'd be on the street, whatever. And you have to come up and, and be something funny. Go watch the impractical jokers, even though they're not always talking to women, but they're going up to people in public. Right? You got to be relaxed. You notice that they're very skilled. They're very honed in terms of being interactive with people and charming. And then you just, that, that's how you did it. You went up, you, you, you got the balls and you went up and you chatted with the girl. Okay. Now, how do I want to do this? 
keep let's make this footnote while we're here. <clears throat> Whether you're talking to a girl or you have the girl on a date, keep in mind it is not 100% your responsibility to keep the conversation going. This will happen, okay? And you boys need to pay attention because, again, you're going to misdiagnose the problem. <clears throat> if you go on a date with a girl or you're talking with a girl and she's not flirting back, with, not flirting, I should say, but talking to you, asking you questions, doing her part to keep the conversation going along, if you're hitting on the girl, she doesn't like you, leave, okay? If you're on a date and it's pulling teeth, and she's just like not saying anything, leave. Because you don't want to date that girl, all right? It's that That's just, then you're just the joker, you're the entertainer. And once you realize that this heavy burden, I think this is where a lot of young guys, or old guys, <clears throat> get worried or worked up, is uh, they're like, what if she doesn't say anything? Well, it's her fucking responsibility to say something every once in a while now, especially if she agrees to go on a date with you. But if she's just there, like, you entertain me, and you know, oh, has the lack of, uh, is it empathy or sympathy? I think it's empathy. Or consideration, like, oh, here's this guy. He might be a little bit nervous. I, I might be a little bit nervous too, but I'm going to make sure I talk to him, maybe ask him some questions, all right? If they can't do at least that little bit, you don't want to be going out with those girls. That's pain. That's torture. Most of us have been there. Girl says yes to a day. You pick her up. And I'm mean, again, where'd Chappie go? Oh, Chappie's gone. I think I put him in my car. <clears throat> okay, I talked to Dicey. You might as well be having a conversation with this die. Hey, Dicey. Wow, five. You got to be crazy. Whoa, one. Hey, four. Wow. Dice is so much more interesting than that girl I went out with there and she sat there like a potato. And it is because at least the dice has some randomness to Oh, three. Hey, wow. Yay. Three, everybody. And once you realize that it's like not the burden is not all on you, you'll relax, you'll become yourself, and then you'll just be normal with these girls that talk and flirt and chat them up and be fine. All right, so there's that. <clears throat> now, what's the other thing? Um, you're on the date or you're talking to her. She has a little bit. Oh, that's what I was going the context. Okay, but keep in mind, I mean, like, I'm old, dude. I'm old. Right. The the days of actually physically going up to a girl and talking to the girl in person is long gone. And I think it's it's somewhat becoming um politically incorrect or not politically incorrect, but socially uh impolite. Like it's just you're supposed to go on the internet now because everyone's been brought up on the internet. Uh, I don't know, you know, you gotta talk to other people. I I'm kind of impressed that Myron Gaines goes to actual nightclubs. All right. So <clears throat> the the sweet talking now has been outsourced to the internet. You're on the Instagram. You're on the whatever, Snapchat. Um, and there, the pressure is off because you can craft your answers, craft your responses. For God's sake, they even got text game. All of which, by the way, to me is such bullshit. <laughs> like, no, because again, talking to other guys, including Myron Gaines, what it's really boiling down to is it's all going to, to a seeking arrangement. Like, here's some money. Yeah, I'm buying your time. Let's go. And it's now being used as a filter to find out if you could be a provider or not. So I'm like, yeah, here's, you know, whatever. Here's the money. Let's go. I'm not dicking around with this me being like, uh, yes, master. Yep, that, that, yep, that, that. Now for my next trick, I'll entertain you. Like, no, here's the money. Be nice to me. You know, that's that's basically what it's boiling down to. Uh, <clears throat> so in the olden days, that that no longer applies. Today, it's text game, which is a little bit easier, but it's also being rapidly skewed or evolved to with the face, not Facebook, um, friends, fa fans only, uh, the seeking arrangement, all these other pay to play sites. That's rapidly what's evolving into. So not only do you need good text game, which is good or email game or whatever it is, uh, you could craft your answers in. That's still not going to be enough. All right. So when you're talking about sweet talk, all right, you could you could do all the texting in the world, uh, but it may be moot where it's like you better have like oh yeah I'm a doctor with six figures and all that other stuff. I hate the sound. Here's where the the uh, algorithm comes in. Here's where the software comes in. Here's where your program. Here's your cheat codes. Have all these things they want and then put it on and then be just cut through the chase. But if you still want to flirt and be charming, <clears throat> it's the same thing. You be funny whether you're in person or online. Um. Uh, you know, when you get online, I guess if you go on a stream yard or a live stream date or a, a Skype date, hey, how you doing? I don't know. Okay. Da, da. 
and you, the one for all the problems that skewing online dating has had and warping the dating market, it does allow for a much more easy, safe, familiar. Because look at it from the girl's perspective, they don't want some rapist. <laughs> they don't want some some future stalker type. All right. Uh, there's a safety barrier there for them. They're more, and you get to know each other. Like, uh, not this is not perfectly analogous, but for example, I never met Doc until like last week. But I've known Doc on the internet for five years. And this happens, you guys probably know this. You make friends on the internet, and you're practically best buds when you meet in person. That there's none of this, oh, I, I hope Doc is the way it's like oh, Doc's Doc, of course. You know, those, 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 uh, <clears throat> bundle of sticks over at the masculine geek. I didn't meet those guys, at, you know, at least without years. And I'm like, yeah, of course. They're the bundle of sticks. I thought they'd be, of course. Never met Jack Napier. I have a feeling he's going to be, you know, this nice, affable guy who's soon going to have the life kick that niceness out of him. He'll be a pissed off, jaded, middle-aged man like me when he gets to be my age. So at least this gives you the time to go ahead and meet the girls that with you do go out in person. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, you'll be relaxed. You already have a rapport with one another. But if you're talking, like actually talking to a girl in person at a party, you know, you go to a wedding or whatever, yeah, you got to be on your toes. And it's a it's a good skill to have. That's like good training to be, able, hey, how you doing? Yeah, you know, just not take yourself too seriously. So, but if you want the analysis, yeah, you're, you're not capable of doing it. You're not good looking enough to do it, all right? And until you go to the gym and you get physically attractive, <clears throat> then you could go ahead and start worrying about charming the girls. But it should be more or less automated online. It, it should just be uh, cake nowadays because there's no time. But the girl's not standing in front of you. You got all the time in the world to craft your response. So there, I guess <clears throat> there's romance, ladies. He's got all the time in the world. He doesn't have to. There's a difference between dancing and there's a difference between performing like Bam, throwing it right back at you. All oh, those are the times where you're like, hit it back and forth, hit it back and forth, girl. The end. It'd be like his girl Friday. They'd be like, throwing them back, throwing That doesn't happen anymore. Two, what's your take on bringing girls to your house? Generally for it. I'm in my early to mid-20s, and I've always went out to her house or their house or have went to a motel together when we were dating. Why are you going to the, your hotel? Why are you going to a hotel, I ask? Even though my parents have a nice yard at a pool. Oh, you live at home. Oh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, I couldn't stand them. One, it would embarrass me. And two, I didn't, I don't want them involved. Yeah, pro and your parents probably don't want you bringing girls home to bang them anyway. I presume most people just wouldn't care. Yeah, your parents definitely care that you're living at home. So what was it like for you? What was your experience on this topic? How would you deal with it putting COVID aside? Well, see, in the olden days, what we, with the, with the saber-toothed tigers and the mammoth and the, the Iroquois and Sioux Indians, what we did as old Gen Xers is we moved the fuck out of the house at 18. And we became men. And I never had this problem. I mean, when I was in high school, I did. I was living at home. And then, crazy concept, I moved out. And I had my own place. And I could do whatever I wanted. Uh, <clears throat> I will provide a little bit of understanding that with um, high rents and high tuition, which the millennials and Gen Zers voted in by saying, let's print off more money to make tuition free. And Bill, I thought, yeah, the money then went right back into the housing market and the money lent out to the student loan went jacked up your tuition. And now you're all paying higher rent. So even though it is a self-inflicted wound, I, I understand that a lot of you have to live at home now, uh, but you did the exact right thing. You go get a motel. That's about the only option. I mean, ideally, you go live with them. Or not live with them, sorry. You go back to their place. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, and then if uh, they want to come back to your place or they too are living at home, yeah, go get a motel. It's much cheaper than renting a place, you know, on the once or twice a year you might bring a girl back. Um, so I can't talk about my experience on the topic because I've never had that experience. I once again moved out at the age of 18 was an adult three you mentioned that humans have evolved to the point of not needing goals anymore <clears throat> in order to survive 
the previous video, you stated something like there are now five of us here and we just drink scotch and chat about philosophy. How do you push yourself forward other than needing constant mental stimulation? I noticed that you haven't found it because you're always doing something even aside from working. When life is solved, what do you do? You need to push forward. I'm not saying we won't be working, but as some of us won't have children, have the extra time and stamina, not to mention no debts, you'll have the money too. What should we do to harness that energy if we have nothing to drive us? A passion is some people are not passionate about anything. Well, you're going to have to get passionate. You're going to have to find something to do. Um, because, and I was listening to Rolo. He was on like the Ben and Jerry show or the Todd and Frank show or something like that. Two young kids. <clears throat> he was talking about discontent. And Rolo's older than me. And he's got technically more of a life. Uh, he's got more of a career. He's got a family. You know, he's got a kid. Um, he has a little more pots on his oven than I do. And he faces the same thing. It's like, what do I do now? What do I do now? What do I do now? And he was talking about this on this uh, <clears throat> podcast he was on about discontent and how the Buddhist, that's what Buddhism, I guess, tries to solve. Because once you solve your problem, the problem then becomes, okay, what do we do now? And for the vast majority of human uh, existence, it's been getting out of poverty, finding food. <clears throat> oh, and by the way, most of you never got out of poverty, or most of them never got out of poverty. Most people never retired. Retirement was a very new concept, brand spanking new in the grand scheme of human evolution or psychological evolution. And so humans are not designed to do nothing. You need to do something. Thankfully, in a weird sense, most people never escaped the bottom two rungs of Maslow's hierarchy of ease. So there was, you know, farmers worrying about plague or pestilence didn't have all, well, what am I going to do when we have so much crops? There was, you work till you, you can't work no more. And hopefully your kids take over the farm. So the human brain is not equipped to get, you know, have all this technology, uh, do all this stuff for us. <clears throat> and then you get to the point like retire. It's just not like, what do you mean retire? So you have to, you have to always go and do something. And so what Roll pointed out was that the discontent is, is the per it's what drives humans to do other things. Now, if you are an inferior human, and I cannot emphasize that enough, where you are perfectly content living off of welfare, getting your EBT, eating your Doritos, living at home or living in Section 8 housing and doing nothing with your life, I envy you in one regard. And that you can actually sit there and be a pile of filth. And have nothing to do. Like you are so dumb and blissfully ignorant. You don't care you're wasting your life. You are perfectly happy squandering this one thing you got. And so it really breaks humans down into two groups of people. Just these sheep. These, these, they, they may not even be considered humans. I mean, true NPCs where I'll just go and consume and watch and watch the, the black is the new purple show and the pointy chair game of Thrones show and <clears throat> somebody go call Saul's show. Oh, look, the, the flashy thing on the screen tells me what I should do. And they don't have fun. They don't fall in love. They don't get into philosophy. Like give me Stefan Molyneux any day. Give me the guys that rule zero I need. I'll, I'll have interesting thoughts and philosophy. Give me that any day over a bunch of dumbasses, although hardworking ones at that, tossing a ball either across a line or through a sphere or whatever. Right? <clears throat> so those group of sheeple you know, who just, just do what they're told, don't think and, don't and do not capitalize, don't even are aware that they're finite and in the wise words of William Shatner, live life like you're going to die because you're going to. All right. Those people are never going to have this problem. You seem to be thinking ahead. You seem to have an intellect. <clears throat> you seem to say, whoa, what's going to happen? And you're right. And that's the second group of people who are like, whoa, we're here. And we're not going to be here forever. And we're going to go away. What do we do? And so here now, the real humans, I'd say, the ones that are appreciative of life and are cognizant and aware and sentient, and above all, also appreciate the fact that they're they're finite and they're going to die. They want to capitalize on it. And they got two ways to go, or a combination of both. One, they find religion, where they can't wrestle or handle with the idea that they are going to die, and they will not go to a shiny place with in the clouds. Like this is it, <clears throat> and what it was like before you were born that nothingness, but you weren't around because you weren't ascent. You didn't exist. To acknowledge the nothingness, it wasn't like you were a brain in outer space and not even outer space because that would indicate star like, the nothingness, the void. Like, oh, here I am just waiting to get bored. No, you didn't even exist to even have that thought. 
you will end. Your sentience will end. And you're like, wow, that's scary. I hope to God there's a guy up. I hope to God God exists. I hope to God, period. <clears throat> I hope there's 72 virgins. I hope Yahweh's up there. I hope there's a lot of guys in purgatory who play poker with all the, the Catholics. And then there's some comfort. And you put you know a significant amount of your spirituality, your philosophy, and like, I'm going to follow these, these rules. I'm going to follow these, these laws set forth by wiser men before me who came up with this philosophy or this, this religion. And that might assuage you. Other people are like, yeah, until one of you people point out you empirically have it, like the scientific method, that your guy is the guy, of which I'll subscribe immediately. <laughs> I'm afraid we just end, and which puts even more importance and value on, on your life. And so <clears throat> the discontent is like you're going to work hard. You're going to solve all your major problems. You're going to skyrocket through Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You're going to get the self-actualization, and you're going to twiddle your fucking thumbs because there's so few people that make it there, and there's nothing else to do. Yay, I made it. You're the first to cross the finish line in a marathon. Now what do you do? You just wait. That was it. It was The race was the whole thing. That's now, you, now you must find something new to do. Now I say fill that in with love. Uh, for those of you that want to have kids, go have kids. That's what it's supposed to be there for. <clears throat> uh, but for those of you who maybe understand the risks of marriage or maybe you're just like, well, that's too big of an investment, for, which I understand. You got to find something to do. And that's the daily chore. That's the daily chore. Uh, I find a book to write, and there's no better feeling than when I hit that publish button and then I get my book in the mail. I'm like, there it is. And then that feeling goes away. Why? Because discontent is what drives you to do something else. You say, okay, well, um, <clears throat> I'm going to go learn how to ballroom dance. And you take and you learn and you dance and you have fun, you interact with people, and that lasts for about two to three years, and then you're bored with that again. Okay, now I want to go. I mean, you just you just go and do things. You have hobbies. It's the same problem that retired people have. Because <clears throat> whether they believe in an afterlife or not, and they retire, we well, still got to fill in that ten to twenty to fifteen years or whatever uh, with something to do. Because your kids are out of the house, you don't have a job no more. Like, okay, what do we do? Gee, Brian, what do we do tonight? <clears throat> same thing we do every night, Pinky. Get coffee in the morning with the old guys, and then go golf. And that's. You look at old people, that's what they've come up with. I guess they get coffee in the morning, and then they go golf. And that's it. That's... And then they get to spend time with their grandchildren, but the grandchildren got to go and do their own thing. <clears throat> Sometimes people go to church. They have social activities, social clubs. Uh, me personally, I think it's just writing books, leaving a legacy. Uh, I like kind of, I'm getting more now into experimenting on, on the human race with my Operation Evil. It's like, oh, is this what you humans want? Okay, because I remember how you guys experimented on me, like I was the nerd, and that was fun to pick on me. Oh, just you wait for the weapons-grade shit I got coming towards you. <clears throat> um, you know, you can. You, I guess you could say you could get into politics, become a statesman, or just fuck shit up. Um, you know, it's whatever you want to do. A lot of people get into drugs. A lot of people get into hedonism. Knocks you out. You don't think about things, I guess. Uh, I wouldn't waste my time doing that, though. Uh, but no, that's the, the, the discontent is what keeps you going. And I guess that is the hobby. Because once you're occupied, you're at the gym, you're writing a book, you're on a marathon, you're hiking across the Appalachia Trail, you're doing whatever it is you're doing. <clears throat> you know, look at Better Bachelor. Look at that. There, Look at him. There's always, there's always a project. Okay, he traveled the world. That he set up his, his YouTube channel, Better Bachelor, Joker. Look him up. He's building his bus. He's going to drive to Alaska. Dude's not even 50 yet. Guy works out regularly. Right? He's got to figure out what to do. Right? And there is no answer. It's just you better find something to do. And, if, and it depends on if you're okay staying at home, eating Cheetos, getting a level 43 warlock on... On the, the Swords and Arrows game, fine. <clears throat> if you're more cognizant, you don't want to waste your life away being one of those herbivore Japanese dudes who just stay in and play video. I watch a documentary. And I'm like, wow, that's sad, man. <laughs> uh, but if you don't want to be one of those guys, you want to go be, be Joker from Better Bachelor or Orolo or whoever, go do it. But that's, that's your job. So there is no answer. So, oh, yeah. The answer is fishing. 
but you'll get sick of fishing. This is where novelty runs out. The answer is have sex with lots of women. The novelty on that will run out. Have, become an ice cream connoisseur. The novelty on that will run Become a scotch connoisseur. The novelty on that will run out. <clears throat> uh, how do you push yourself forward? So, I mean, some practical things I do is, oh, dude, I cons I'm voraciously consume documentaries and philosophy podcasts. Like I will go through, I, I save my history documentaries at night because I could kind of fall asleep and history repeats itself. And then I'll save like, uh, you know, turd flinging monkey, Terrence pop, Stefan Molyneux, um, the backlog, world-class bullshit There's a whole potpourri. I guess world-class bullshit is, isn't terribly philosophical, but I'll just consume a ton of other people's thoughts because I, you can't always converse with everyone you want, but thankfully in today's world, there are sh millions of people creating content and podcasts and ideas and human interaction in the form of conversation is what I think is the most intellectually stimulating thing you can have. I mean, grab a random podcast of Stefan Molyneux. One hour of him is at least better than 99% of the crap you heard in school from kindergarten through college because teachers fucking suck and they're scripted and they're NPCs, right? That is what, you know, at least stimulates the mind a little bit. <clears throat> And there is kind of like this constant in, uh, mental uh, stimulation that you need. Uh, but pushing forward, I have a to-do list. I, okay, I have a to-do list of things that inevitably have to get done. But I got a daily chore list. And that's vital. Absolutely. Now, does it help you get disciplined and make sure you're successful and get your shit done? It's like, I did all this today. Visually see it. Visually see it. I did all this today. Got it done. So at least you know you weren't a parasite or a lout or some NPC voting Democrat to get other people's money in the give me that's as you major in whatever philosophy or some dumb ass shit like that. And basically be a parasite on society. Like, no, I'm a productive motherfucker. I count. And then the other stuff is have leave some kind of legacy or value to the rest of society. You know, all these books I got, yeah, you know, some of them joking. They're not going to solve the world. But some of them will solve poverty. <laughs> So that when you die, you're like, well, I did better than anybody else. I made my life count. And that's it. That's how you got point and purpose and agency. That's what gets you up in the morning. The book that I'm, a book, essay, whatever length it's going to be, analyzing the ROI and the pursuit of women, that is not going to be a ground-shaking, earth-shaking book. It should be, but it won't because it's politically incorrect. It's not what people want to hear. But it directly addresses the, 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 key, the key variable of all of economic production, and that's men's work ethic and technological innovation, which we roughly have a monopoly on. Women are are moving in; they're certainly making their own progress, and uh, more recently. Uh, but it's still. I'm like, well, here's this is what the underpinning of all world, uh, all the world's economies, is guys and their work ethic and their drive. You know, and I'm, I'm talking about the one thing that kept them going. The fuel they run on is female youth and beauty, and you're taking that away. And I'm pointing out there might be some huge economic ramifications to that. Now, of course, <clears throat> we don't want to hear that. But when I when I leave, that is going to be more of an important in intellectual honesty, setting aside politics, what people want to hear. That is going to be more fundamental foundation. What's the word I'm looking at? Uh, groundbreaking. That is going to be the most groundbreaking piece of economic work done, I think, since the wealth of nations, to be perfectly honest. All right. Not, not to besmirch Adam Smith or Walter E. Williams or Thomas Sawell or Milton Friedman or even Karl Marx, but he was just like, I want people free shit. Give me that. Nerd. Angel's daddy, can you give me more money? Thank you. Mm -hmm. But I don't give a shit if it makes me popular or wealthy or not. Like, here it is, motherfuckers. I just explained it to you. More ground, earth-shaking, groundbreaking. That's what groundbreaking economic research than the millions of fucking idiots that got their masters or doctorates and economic. Ah, I did a decision matrix. This <laughs> we, we analyzed deficits. We found out the Republicans suck. <laughs> Hey, I found out how to make the entire world like three, well, actually nine times more productive. Fucking no. I know I, but I leave it there. I'm like, yeah, there you go. It's there for the taking. Anybody want to read it for 1995? Audiobook costs you a little bit more. But that's it. That's how I'm like, here it is, motherfuckers. I'm going to leave you a But I guess uh, another way to look at it is how many Easter eggs are going to leave society after you die? Like when I pass away, 
I'm going to convert my body into diamonds. Well, not me. Someone else is going to. And then I have uh, agents in the field who will hide. Uh, you know, you, you get three to five carats of a diamond. All right. And in one diamond with a bunch of silver and copies of my books and a thumb drive. We're going <clears> to <throat> wrap them up in, in, in saran wrap. We're going to send them out all over. Have them hidden. So 500 years from now, oh, who is this crazy guy? You know, meanwhile, the hundreds of millions, of billions of people that stay at home playing their fucking video games. They can't even walk down the street unless it's to get like a, a super slurp uh, diet or not diet, regular Coke. There, there'll be nobody. I'm going to be going on into the future, not for vanity, but like, who the fuck is this guy? Oh, look at these books. He says that we should own our own property. Well, the communists, our communist overlords have been telling us the opposite for 500 years. So there you go. Uh, four, I recently found a quote. I would say it kind of contradicts your approaches to the enjoy the decline of batch of head economics from moving overseas and starting over. What's your take? If we lose freedom here, there is no place to escape to. This is the last stand on earth, Ronald Reagan. What's your take on this quote? Uh, it's outdated. Back in the day, the United States was pretty much the last stand on earth because you had the Soviet Union. Now the roles have reversed. The United States is becoming more tyrannical. They're becoming very Orwellian. <clears throat> you can't think certain things. You can't interact or hire or fire certain people. Government is increasingly involved. Like, shoot, you guys all have the government raise your kids. You don't educate the kids. They raise the kids in the school. They don't educate them. <clears throat> and now Russia, ironically, is more free than the United States. They have better finances. And now they're more corrupt. Uh, certainly, it's not a panacea. But the former Soviet bloc is now free. <laughs> Fuck that shit. So, so you can move. There, there are other places you can go. And forget economic freedom. Let, let's just talk about cultural freedom or, or leaving you the fuck alone. Like Japan has bad finances, very bad finance. Probably the worst finances in the developed world. Um, but at least the Japanese, if I go there, they're not going to be like, oh, what do you want, Mr. Not Jet? Because we hate ourselves so much. We want to just bend over backwards, slice our wrists open. And what do you want us to do for you? What do you want? Because you're not Japanese. Oh, my God, diversity. They're like, uh, go fuck off. We're Japanese. You better be well. I'm like, whoa, I understand, man. That's what keeps your state, your country stable. Just want to come here where it's quiet. It's peaceful. People are law-abiding. <clears throat> I could walk out and get uh, noodles late at night downtown Tokyo and not worry about getting mugged or robbed or being accused of an Easternism. Because the way I was born. Oh, I mean, they'll be the Japanese will be racist in a certain sense towards me. Like I'll be Gaijin or Gaijin, um, where I'm obviously not qualified to. Well, I am qualified, but I will not be allowed to apply for certain jobs. You're not even allowed to go into certain establishments if you're not Japanese. Fine, man. Oh, whatever. Do your thing. I'll be in my little hut off on the island, not bothering nobody, paying my taxes, and it's a nice, safe, stable country to be in. So it's it's not even necessarily economic freedom I'm going after, though I'm certainly going to go. It's to be left the fuck alone. Not to have these fucking harpies on the internet. Oh my God, people like you yeah, are oppressing people like me and that's why we need more of your money. Oh, fuck off. Just fuck right the fuck off. Um, <clears throat> so uh, no, there is a place to, there are several places to escape to. Yeah, and I remember Ronald Reagan. It was it was uh, good, but it's outdated. All right, we got any? Whoa, 120 comments. Scoopy doop 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 doop. Uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. The competent man for five bucks. You should give a seminar on what Roosh V would call clown game, or are things so far gone that not even clown game works? All right, yeah, I, I'm aware of clown game. Um, clown game was that you're supposed to entertain the girl, which which. It's not even game. That's like acquiescence, I guess. Where and this happened. I'm not. I'm not lying. And I understand why a lot of young men are afraid of going on dates because you got to perform, right? The performance is on you. All the work is on you. Is the natural dynamics of men having a sex drive nine times that of women? <clears throat> is you want more what they want than what they want out of you? So now the onus or the responsibility is on you to entertain and make the girl happy. Bullshit. Okay. Stop putting the girl ahead of you. Do you like the girl? Yes. Okay. Go out with her. But guys, you're on a, especially on a first date, you don't even know if you like this girl. You just want to have sex with her. And maybe not even that. 
right? You got to go on a date, see what it's like. And if she's going to sit there, as, as you guys all say, a, a, a starfish, starfish sex. Well, there's also a starfish date where she just lies there. Dude, about half the time that happened. And you know what I should have done? Instead of worrying like, oh my God, what did I do? What was wrong? I'm, I fret. I try like, oh, like, you know, it's like playing breakout. You're always trying to hit that ball through to break out. Like, what do I got to do? What do I, gotta, you know what you got to do? Stop playing that fucking game. I should, to be perfectly honest, of, of the hundreds of dates I went, went on, I should have walked away from at least half. Like when I got there and, the, you know, they're late, done. I show up, she's out there on time, done. Pick the girl up. I mean, this would always happen. <clears throat> God, this would happen a lot. I meet the girl at whatever, party, bar, dance, blah, blah. She seemed all interested. Well, she was drunk. That's what it was. They were drunk. And then I'd pick them up and they were sober and they're like all tight. All tense, you know, like a pillar of salt. It, like, okay, I guess I guess I'll talk to Die. Hello, Die. Oop, hang on. Six? No way! Oh my God, Die! You're so interesting and amazing. <laughs> I mean, they were really just a piece of furniture. I mean, there were times like I might as well have grabbed a chair. Put it in the car, drove it around, sat it over in the chair next to me, had dinner with the chair. Hello, chair, and that you know, or lamp, whatever. It's just, you know, ah, good night, lamp. And then, you know, it, it was the same thing. And if a girl isn't gonna talk to you, she's gonna waste you, you leave. I mean, you have every right, guys, to say this. Like, yeah, you know what? I'm not having fun, and neither are you. So I'm taking you back home. Now, that might cause offense, and then you might be reading this book on the wrong side of that. Uh, that event. <clears throat> but yeah, man, just it's if like the girl's boring, life's too short to deal with boring girls. You're not there to be like their fucking entertainer. You know, like oh, I want to find a guy who's into well, what do you okay, ladies? You better kind of, you know. So yeah, clown game, I wouldn't recommend doing it. <clears throat> I mean, I'm sure when Roosh wrote about it, it was to get laid. All right. I'm more for like, look, I, I I'm here. You gotta entertain me. I'm looking for interesting conversation. And if they're not going to do that or even, you know, not every girl. Now, keep in mind, <clears throat> in all fairness, sometimes girls are also nervous, too. They might like you, and they're all tense. Well, ladies, you better open up pretty soon. I mean, come on. You're all equal now. Da, da, da. <laughs> Except dating. Men still got to. But keep that in mind, guys. The girls got to. Sometimes they're nervous. And so you got to, you know, usually you give it a shot for a second date, too. If the first one didn't go so well, it's all right. But, oh, I don't know. Uh Scrolling. Judd Grover for two bucks. Tap. What are your thoughts on Charles Burkowski? Who's Charles Burkowski? Charles Burkowski, German American poet. I don't know. I've never, I don't read poetry. I'll read. <clears throat> German American. I'm I'm generally not pro poet. I don't know. I'm bored with him. I already I really don't really care. Um did he pay his own bills, I guess? Fine. You know, what do you think of Gore Vidal? I is that it? We're caught up. Boom, done. All right. More asshole consulting on the way. Questions, answers, hit me up there. We'll see you guys later. Toodles. <laughs>